hydrogen, the fuel of the near future for the past 50 years. It's a joke I've heard many, many times in the auto industry as pundits and car customers rightly observe that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have been promised for a really long time, but have yet to really catch on. Today, while there are hydrogen fuel cell cars available in some parts of the world, sales haven't all been that good in most countries. And I say that because unless you're in Japan, where availability of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is pretty much nationwide, most other countries have hydrogen fuel cell car availability that's usually geographically locked to a very small area where there's existing hydrogen refueling infrastructure. That limited refueling infrastructure is one of the reasons why hydrogen fuel cell cars haven't taken off, along with a high sticker price and, as usual, a lack of consumer awareness, same as for EVs. And while hydrogen fuel cell electric cars once had a far larger range than battery electric vehicles, improvements in battery technology, not to mention a massive growth in charging infrastructure, means that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles don't have the edge over battery electric vehicles that they once did. It's no surprise then that hydrogen fuel cell sales haven't all been very big. But in recent weeks, two hydrogen fuel explosions, one in the US and one in Norway, have prompted two automakers to issue a stop sale on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in one country. Meanwhile, in the US, Toyota is quite literally throwing money at Toyota dealers to sell its Mirai fuel cell sedan. From outside, you'd be forgiven for thinking this is it for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. But is it? I want to start by reminding you that I've already made several videos on hydrogen fuel cell technology, including one explaining some of the many challenges that lay ahead for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And with that in mind, I'm not going to rehash old arguments here. What I am going to do, however, is try and add some context to these stories that we're going to discuss. The explosions, first, which occurred in California, happened at an industrial plant where hydrogen fuel tankers fill up with fuel to then transport to gas stations. According to preliminary reports, the explosion occurred as a result of a leak between the filling system for the tanker and the tanker itself. The explosion caused quite a lot of disruption and resulted in a hydrogen fuel shortage in the San Francisco Bay Area. Meanwhile, a hydrogen filling station in Norway exploded earlier this week, and it resulted in two people being sent to hospital with minor injuries. Preliminary investigations point to a hydrogen fuel tank blowing itself up, but the aftermath saw hydrogen fueling stations owned by the same company as the one which blew up being closed, at least temporarily, and a temporary halt sale put on all of the Toyota Mirai and Hyundai Nexo fuel cell cars in Norway. These two explosions are scary, and the reasons behind their explosions need to be fully understood to ensure that they don't happen again. At the same time, however, those who use the evidence of these explosions to claim that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are bad may find their argument needs some context. And that context is this gas station explosions happen from time to time. And there was a deadly one in Virginia back in May. And gasoline-powered cars catch fire too, resulting in horrible death balls of hot metal and gas going boom. But battery electric cars also sometimes catch fire, as recent Tesla fires have shown, and a safety recall for both the Jaguar I-Pace and Audi e-tron seek to prevent. In the context of explosions causing hydrogen vehicles to not be sold then, well, I think that's quite a long shot. It's more likely and plausible that the explosions caused a stop sale because automakers don't want to sell cars that can't be refueled. Which brings me to the incentives that Toyota is throwing at customers in the US right now. Under certain circumstances, Toyota is giving dealers $15,000 to use as cash on hood deal sweeteners or whatever else they see fit in order to sell the Toyota Mirai fuel cell sedan. As is usually the case with these cash on hood deals, the dealer isn't actually under any obligation to pass that money on to the customer. But if they do, it represents a massive cut in the effective price for Toyota's first production fuel cell car. It's likely that this deal is intended to get more Toyota Mirai sold, especially in electric car loving California, where a long range Tesla Model 3 is frankly a lot more attractive than the larger, less easy to fuel Mirai. 
Context is king and in a market where hydrogen refueling infrastructure really is crawling out and is far behind its promised rollout schedule, it's no wonder that Toyota is having to pull some gymnastics to sell this vehicle. And then there's the shocker. A week or so ago, Toyota, the company which had to this point been pretty negative towards electric cars, suddenly said it has plans for a roadmap for battery electric vehicles. And it wants to make half of all of its cars battery electric by 2025, five and a half years time. At the same time, however, it says it's still committed to hydrogen. Take from that what you will, but it certainly seems that Toyota is now following Hyundai and Honda in pivoting a little more towards battery electric vehicles, in fact, more than they once were, shifting away from hydrogen fuel cells while keeping that technology in development in the background. Is hydrogen dead? No. I don't think it is long-term. Other automakers are still researching, and there's been a resurgence in interest in fuel cell vehicles following battery cell shortages. But right now, I think Toyota's cash incentives are to ensure it meets ZEV mandates, and the stop sales in Europe are to ensure cars aren't sold that you can't fuel. Battery electric is winning right now, and I think it will continue to do so for some time. But I learned a long time ago never to say never. What do you think? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.